Off the shore of Staten Island, New York, rests a ship graveyard of decommissioned, scrapped, and abandoned vessels of various sizes, ages, and states of decay. This unusual boat graveyard was set up in the 1930s and went by several different names such as the Witten Marine Scrapyard, Arthur Kill Boat Yard, and Tugboat Graveyard. Now, it's officially known as the Don John Iron and Metal Scrap Processing Facility. The boat graveyard was once home to as many as 400 vessels. Today, that number has been estimated to be between 25 and 40 decaying ships. The scrapyard is known for its large assortment of obsolete steam tugs, ferries, car floats, and others that have a comprehensive history. But how did this location come to be, and what made this place the official dumping ground for accumulated ship wreckage? Today we discover Staten Island's boat graveyard. I'm your host Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. So what's a ship graveyard? Well, a ship graveyard refers to several old vessels that have gone out of service and have been dumped. As the name suggests, a ship graveyard is where ancient ships, which have completed their service life, are abandoned to disintegrate naturally. Also known as a ship cemetery, a ship graveyard would generally have many ships boats or hulls of scrapped vessels left to decay and rust. The practice of abandoning ships to rust in a particular area was followed mainly during the ancient times. You see, the history of shipbreaking yards goes back to centuries ago as the ancient wooden ships were recycled to reuse the timber. Since the arrival of metal as the main component of boats, this form of ship disposal became popular so that the steel could be recycled to produce new products. Staten Island's 24-acre boat graveyard located near the Fresh Kills landfill off the west shore of Staten Island was founded in the 1930s during the wake of World War II by John J. Whitty. The primary use for this typical ship graveyard is when vessels are broken up for parts and raw materials which can be sold or reused for scrap. However, Whitty, who managed the graveyard until he died in 1980, refused to dismantle any ships unless a buyer was available, making this place a dumping site for obsolete watercraft. The Staten Island Boat Graveyard is the main location in New York City where vessels or the remnants of boats have been deliberately abandoned and remain untouched. When a ship reached the end of its operational life, it could be brought to the highly industrialized Staten Island Boat Graveyard, sunk in the shallow water and left to rust away. Because Witty was so eminent about not dismantling his ships during his management, this left an abundance of nautical artifacts. After Witty passed, the Staten Island Boat Graveyard was taken over by his son-in-law, Joe Coyne, who described it as similar similar to an automobile salvage yard, with the boats serving as a source of parts to sell. Coin ultimately went against his father-in-law's request not to dismantle and began to free up some space on the grounds. When his father-in-law was in charge, the property held over 400 ships, but Coin was able to eliminate several, bringing the number down to about 100. You see, when the original owner was alive, he was very territorial over his property and would chase people away for trespassing. After his death, the trespassing laws stayed in place and the ship graveyard was restricted from the public and photographers. Coin eventually passed the torch of ownership to his son Arnold, who upholds the no trespassing rule to this day. Many historic vessels occupy the grounds, and some even refer to this boatyard as an accidental marine museum. Perhaps most famous is the USS PC-1264, which was the first World War II U.S. naval ship to have a predominantly African-American crew. This ship was a PC-461 class submarine Marine chaser built for the United States Navy. The vessel was one of two U.S. Navy ships operated primarily by African Americans during World War II. The other ship was the escort destroyer, the USS Mason. On December the 9th, 1941, a telegram was sent by the National Association for the Advancements of Colored People, also 
known as the NAACP, to U.S. Secretary of the Navy Frank Knox, requesting that African Americans should be accepted into the Navy to serve. Still, the Navy refused to change its policy. A week later, on December the 17th, 1941, a letter from the NAACP to President Franklin Roosevelt on the matter prompted him to contact Mark Etheridge, chairman of the Fair Employment Practice Committee, to investigate the Navy's policy. On June the 1st, 1942, the U.S. Navy announced that African Americans would be allowed to enlist in the general service. On November the 28th, 1943, the PC-1264 was completed by the Consolidated Shipbuilding Company in Morris Heights and launched. The PC-1264 was a submarine chaser intended to intercept and destroy German U-boats stationed off the coast of the United States. This ship was in service for less than two years, but her crew's performance and the USS Masons led the US Navy to reevaluate its perception of African Americans as fleet members. The ship disappeared from the historical record until two 1990-era photographers showed the ship heavily rusted but still afloat amid other hulls of the Staten Island boat graveyard. Another ship that still haunts on site is the New York City Fire Department fireboat Abram S. Hewitt, which served as a floating command post at the 1904 sinking of the passenger ferry P.S. General Slocum, a disaster that killed more than a thousand people. Constructed in 1891 and owned by the Knickerbocker Steamboat Company, the P.S. General Slocum was made of white oak, locust, and yellow pine. It was licensed to carry 2,500 passengers, which served as a sidewheel passenger steamboat in Brooklyn. The P.S. Slocum was involved in several mishaps during her service history, including multiple groundings and collisions. However, on June the 15th, 1904, the ship carried 1,000 358 passengers, including a massive crew. Chartered by St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church for $350, the passengers came mainly from the German-American community of the Lower East Side. Most of the passengers were women and children. Unfortunately, a fire broke out on deck and spread rapidly within a half hour. The passengers didn't have much of a choice other than to drown at sea or burn alive on the ship. Sadly, most of the the passengers could not swim and the period clothing of the time worked against them. The fireboat Abram S. Hewitt was the first boat launched to the scene of the burning P.S. General Slocum. The Hewitt was a coal-powered fireboat operated by the fire department of New York City from 1903 to 1958, costing $83,750 to build. The Hewitt was the department's last coal-powered vessel and had a pumping capacity of 7000 thousand gallons per minute and was launched on July 11th, 1903 at the shipyards of the New York Shipbuilding Corporation in Camden, New Jersey. The Hewitt was commissioned in October of 1903 and was named after a recently deceased mayor. Unfortunately, the fire on P.S. General Slocum was uncontrollable. Only 321 passengers survived out of a total of 1,358 passengers. The final death count totaled 1,021. The P.S. General Slocum didn't make it to the Staten Island boat graveyard, but the Abram S. Hewitt did after being disposed of in 1958 and can still be seen by boat or kayak. It peeks out above the water and is coated in a scarlet red rust. Another historical boat relic located in the Staten Island boat graveyard is the New England Passenger Steamer, as it was called back in its day. Of 1928. It served its years well and ended its career as a transportation boat during the famous yet disastrous D-Day. The epic ship carried many passengers and traveled all over the world. Lastly, there is the beautiful ship named Eldia. Eldia was a 143 meters long steel freighter damaged after being blown ashore in East Orleans, Massachusetts on March the 29th, 1984. After delivering its load of Colombian sugar in St. John, New Brunswick. The vessel was hit by a storm bearing 80 mile per hour winds. 
this storm was part of a period of extreme weather that caused President Ronald Reagan to pledge federal disaster relief. Unfortunately, Eldia was unable to match the strength of the storm. It was fixed by the Donjon Iron and Metal Scrap Processing Facility, but it was returned to the Staten Island Boat Graveyard to be scrapped because its owner ran short on finances. The Staten Island Boat Graveyard isn't the only place in the area that has skeletal remains. Tucked between an industrial stretch of Arthur Kill Road and Staten Island Boat Graveyard, on a narrow elevated strip is an abandoned cemetery called the Slight Family Graveyard. It's more popularly referred to as the Blazing Star Cemetery, inspired by the area's original name. The title Blazing Star is derived from a tavern that stood here before the American Revolution and later became the name the Blazing Star Ferry that connected stagecoach routes from New York to Philadelphia. However, this graveyard isn't filled with boats. It's filled with people, with gravestones dating back to 1751. Just like the Staten Island Boat Graveyard, this cemetery is landmarked and holds some of Staten Island's most notable names. This includes the Seguin, Decker, Purin, Winant, and Slight family. In fact, the Winant family was one of the first European settlers of Staten Island, and the Seguins still have a mansion labeled after their family's name. According to the Landmarks Preservation Commission, designated report. The cemetery is one of the first community burial grounds on Staten Island. This place holds so much history and is just a stone's throw away from the Staten Island Boat Graveyard. Another nearby cemetery is the Rossville Cemetery located on the wooded side of Kill Arthur, which winds towards the southern tip of Staten Island. It's a small patch of cleared ground spotted with broken and eroded gravestones from the 17th and 18th century. Legend has it, this place is haunted, and you must walk beyond the graves, down the muddy embankment, step into the soggy marsh, and from here, we return to the Staten Island Boat Graveyard. According to some, this graveyard is a historical and haunted maritime marvel, ranking among the top 10 boat graveyards. With all this death and decay within the property and its surroundings, for many, it's not improbable to believe in the prospects of paranormal activity. With perhaps a more pragmatic view, others simply see the graveyard as a place of danger and unsafe metal filled with toxic substances that should be removed from the waterway. Either way, the boats evoke the past in their iconic silhouettes becoming so disposable. Like so many relics of our species' industrial past, the Staten Island Boat Graveyard has attracted many fearless artists and vandals over the years. The small ships closest to shore are splattered with spray-painted tags, while those further out have been frequent subjects for oil painters and watercolorists. Since the 1980s, photographers have visited the grounds to capture as many pictures as possible and have created exhibits around their visuals. Movie makers also visited the grounds. Film scenes such as the 2010 movie Salt, starring Angelina Jolie, were partially shot at the Staten Island Boat Graveyard. Two years after after the movie Salt debuted, documentary makers dedicated footage to this remarkable spot, creating the 32-minute documentary Graves of Arthur Kill in 2012. The graveyard got so famous over the years that even Instagram made a contest in which they gathered some of the most outstanding photos made on these muddy waters. Other frequent guests include marine historians that like to explore the area and admire the view. Overall, the location has become an unofficial tourist attraction because of its eerie environment. This place is hard to access. It is in a remote location and anyone trespassing must be willing to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Among the piles of metal that once had a real purpose, one can find several historically significant relics. Luckily, the Staten Island Boat Graveyard can be viewed by boat or kayak from the water, but access to the grounds is relentlessly forbidden. The official site of Dungeon Recycling, the current owners of the Staten Island Boat Graveyard, states the following, quote, We receive many inquiries from amateur and professional photographers and filmmakers requesting to access the graveyard from our property. 
Unfortunately, we are unable to grant such requests. Dungeon Recycling is an operational scrap facility utilizing heavy equipment, and safeguard regulations prohibit us from allowing photography of any kind. Dungeon Marine Company Incorporated became the official caretakers of the Staten Island Boat Graveyard in 1964 with Mr. J. Arnold Whitty as Dungeon's president and chief executive officer. Dungeon Marine's principal business activities were marine salvage, marine transportation, and related services. Dungeon itself is named after Arnold Witte's two oldest children, Donna and John. Now, I'm sure I already have hell to pay for the pronunciation of the name of this marina in the comment sections, but I'm actually looking for some clarification here. Is it pronounced Dungeon or Don John? And let's see how this little pronunciation mishap affects the uh, YouTube algorithm. Wink, wink. Anyhow, the Don John companies employ more than 400 full-time professionals, have a fleet of more than 40 wholly owned and operated vessels, including four salvage tugs, which range in horsepower from 1,200 to 8,000, a fleet of utility vessels from 250 to 1,200 horsepower, and three units of heavy lift derrick barges with 200 to 1,000 ton capacity. According to DonJohn.com, concentrating on the environment became a huge focus. In the early 1980s, Don John recognized the ever-growing importance of protecting the environment, both on sea and land, which progressed with with their sister companies. These companies have since grown to become recognized leaders in the environmental industry with offices and facilities from Massachusetts to Maryland. And it's here that we reach an interesting contradiction. Historic preservation is in the hands of a scrapping company. I suppose that what's left in this mysterious boat graveyard is destined to disappear one way or another. That's it for today's video. Don't forget to check out our Battleship Graveyard playlist and subscribe for new videos every Thursday and Saturday. Until next time, this is Ryan Sokash signing off.